I would like to discuss the concept of the power of the written word. And you know, the, the written word has been used in magic for as long as there's been magic. Uh, there's been signs and symbols that were written into sand and on walls and on tablets and on papyrus and all kinds of things and parchment, etc. And what we would like to discuss today is how we can use a modern version of the written word to get practical magical results. And the easiest and most, well, I don't want to say the most effective, but it's a very effective way. Uh, sometimes people want real complicated things because they think that the more complicated it is, the more effective it is, but that's not the case necessarily. Uh, the One of the most effective and simple ways of using the power of the written word is by simply making lists of what you want to bring into your life. So I, at the, the first visible crescent new moon of each month, recommend that you get out a piece of paper or several pieces of paper and start writing down what it is that you want to bring into your life just that month. And then start to think about, well, what do I want to bring in my life over the next three months and the next six months and the next 12 months, the next five years, etc. And just that exercise in and of itself is very, very powerful. It's not enough to just think about it in your mind. You want to write it down. You want to write it down. And it should be fun for you to do that because you're not writing down things that you think you should bring into your life. You're talking about things that you really want. Do you want a new car? Do you want a new job? Do you want to start a new business? Do you want a new pair of shoes? Do you want a new computer? Do you want a healthier body? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want a a new boyfriend or girlfriend? What do you want? And don't worry about details. Just what do you want? Just brainstorm. And then go through your list and start to like pick out maybe the the most important three, two or three things that you that you see on that list. And those are what you're going to be focusing on for this month. And then you want to decide, well, okay, let's say it's a maybe you, you want to bring in a new computer. Well, then you ask yourself, okay, well, what do I want? What functions do I want the computer to have? Do I, what, what do I know that I want? Well, maybe you already know. I want, you know, the, the newest MacBook Pro. And I want this amount of memory. And I want, I want um, you know, what, 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 do you, what do you want on it? Just whatever you want. Write it down. Write it down on a clean sheet of paper. My new MacBook Pro. And you list all of the things that you want on it. And then maybe you want to to list that it's easily paid for. And you want to list that it's, um, that it brings you joy. And that it's, um, uh, you know, that it, that it runs well. And that it's, that it's always in perfect working order. Those kinds of things. And then you want to start asking yourself more of the why do I want this computer? What functions will it serve in my life? What will it do for me? So then you're getting more into the essence of what you what, what it is that you want. Well, it's going to enable me to, um, whatever you do, it's going to help me write music or it's going to help me do my job better. It's going to help me to, um, to, to feel more creative or um, it's just going to be a lot of fun for me. It's something that I want because it's, you know, it's going to, it's, it's going to save me some time because it, it, it will be more powerful and I won't, you know, I'll be able to, to, to load all the pages quickly or, or whatever you want, whatever, whatever the functions are for you. You want to ask yourself what functions will it serve in your life? Why do I want this thing? All right. And then, 
you want to be as specific as you can as to what you want and what the essence of that thing is going to be for you. And then you need to ask yourself, well, what, this is what I do anyway, what element is most predominant in this, in, in this thing? Is it mostly air? Is it mostly earth? What do you, what do you feel? Don't, I mean, you can get some help on this, but most important for you, what do you feel is the, is the most important element that, that is um, represented by this thing? And then you ask yourself, well, what planet, what, which, which, which of the, the planets um, is, does this rule? Do I do a, Is this mostly a Mercury thing or is it mostly a, I don't know, it's up to you. Is it, do you feel like it's mostly a Jupiter thing because it's a luxury or, or, or what do you think it is? Or is it mostly a solar thing because it's, a, it's, it's specifically for your business? You know, usually we, computers are, are more Mercury or, or Uranus, um, but, um, but it's totally up to you. And then what you are doing with that is you are, are, are starting to get an idea of what not only you want and what honing down what exactly it is that you're creating specifically with all of the functions, but you're also getting clear on why you want it energetically, what it, what, what it is within you that it's going to serve. And then you're also figuring out, well, what astrologically, cosmically, magically, what forces am I attuning myself to in order to, in order to create this thing for myself? And, uh, and then once you're clear on that, then you can determine what day of the week and planetary hour would be most appropriate for you to set aside to be doing the the first part of your magical operation with this. And then you'll want to start to condense your your list of qualities and things that you want into an easy phrase, a little spell, a little incantation, a short little ditty that uh, if it rhymes, that's great, but if it doesn't rhyme, that's fine too. Just, Just something that you can that you can encapsulate all of that, all of those qualities down into a, a, you know, a phrase or two that is easy to remember. And then it's simple. All you do is you take that, uh, you take that phrase and you write it down on a, on a, on a fresh sheet of paper, um, maybe parchment if you have it. Just go to the stationery store and get some nice parchment. Uh, in maybe in the color of ink that's represented by the planet that you've chosen and on the day of the week and maybe even in the hour of the planet that you that you've chosen to work with maybe you've chosen to um, research what uh, deities are part of that energy or maybe if you're doing angelic magic what which of the archangels or angels are are, are um, rule that that planet so that you can address those those forces more personally that's up to you if you're comfortable with that and then i recommend for the power of the written word um, finding a runic alphabet that you feel comfortable with um, I've I always have used not I, I I use several but the one that I've been using for almost all of my life is the Theban script T H E B A N and it's a great magical alphabet because it's not um, it's not a phonetic alphabet you actually can can go from letter to letter and and then write that little ditty phrase on your parchment in the Theban script and place maybe a colored candle with the, um, uh, the, the color of, of, of the, the planetary color of what you're trying to accomplish. You can even take a little nail and scratch in in the Theban script right on the candle as well, that little, that little small phrase or, or ditty, and put that on top 
uh, on a, in a candle holder on top of the um, the parchment. Um, oftentimes, we'll anoint that candle with some oil. You can just use some uh, olive oil is fine, or if you want to use some, uh, if you want to mix in some essential oils that are appropriate to the uh, to the planet in question, you can do that as well. Maybe you can uh, get some some incense that is appropriate to that planetary vibration. The more you do, the better. Even if you if you want to put a an altar cloth down of the appropriate color to that planet, that would make sense. Um, so the more you can the more you can do, the better. If there's herbs or roots that are um, that correspond with that that planetary vibration, you can also. Uh, incorporate some of those in, um, sprinkle them uh, around the candle as well. And then on your on your original sheet of paper where you where you listed the qualities of what you wanted, everything you want, you just sit down and 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 you can read that aloud or mentally. And just every day, starting on that day that you start with the candle, just go over in your mind. All of those things that you've that you've described, and better yet, write it again, rewrite it every day, and and you can rewrite that little ditty if you want every day, or you can chant that little ditty every day, and that's more in uh, keeping with the power of the spoken word, which I will discuss on um, maybe next week if I have a chance. So, that's a, a wonderful thing to do is just is to just start learning how to write into existence that which you want. Now, if you if you don't go into for all the candles and the incense and the colors and all that stuff, that's okay. You can do this magic too just by taking a notebook and writing down what you want and looking it over every day. And just and, and copy it over every single day. Every day you're going to write it again. What you want, what all of the 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 attributes and and all of the um, the qualities and the essence of what it's going to bring you, you you rewrite it. And if you if you change it a little bit as as you, you maybe change your mind about this or that, that's fine. You can it can it can evolve. And just every day write it out one more time, and and do that for a week or two. Until the until the um, till the moon is is no longer waxing, and then let it go. Just put it away for a little while, and you can keep coming back to it every so often. But then just put that away for a little while and go on to the next thing. But um, so if you if you're not interested in in the runes and the candles and all of the the witchy stuff, you can still use the power of the written word to your advantage by just keeping a little book, a little diary, a little journal of what you want to create in your life. And that is in and of itself a magical act, the magic of the written word, the power of the written word. And the uh, the beauty of that is you don't need any trappings. All you need is paper and a pen. And if you want to get, you know, more involved in the, in the, um, planetary and and elemental perspectives of it you can still use the the appropriate colored ink if that appeals to you but you can do some very 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 powerful magic with nothing but a piece of paper and a pencil or pen right so um give that a try and i think you're going to be extremely impressed with the results the it's important to write down what you want every month though um at least and just and just re um re, go over your goals at least once a month your your larger set of goals um just just so that you can stay on top of what it is what direction your life is going because if you don't if you don't do that then you are just going to drift along and you're going to be at the effects of of um of everybody else's will you'll you'll you you will just not have any direction in life having a mental goal is not the same as having a written goal if you write it down you are actually anchoring it into manifestation um people that are not happy people that are um 
in poverty or that are in ill health, that are um, lonely um, and and that are unhappy, most of those people don't have written goals. Most people with written goals tend to live healthier, happier lives. Now, that's not to say that somebody that gets sick, it's just because they didn't have a goal. Uh, that that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm but I am saying is that happy people tend to be proactive in their lives, and unhappy people who feel as though life is dealing them a, a, an unfair hand usually don't bother to write their goals down on a regular basis. They might have tried it once, but they don't do it all the time. Um, Usually people that are in the process of, of writing their, their goals down every month, they have little time to be envious of other people because they're so involved in creating what they want. So um, when you're doing your goals, it's very important that you write out what you truly want not what you think you should do. So if you wrote down, I want to pay all my bills, I want to pay all my credit cards off, but you don't really want to do that, then put that on hold for the time being or find another way to state it that gets you excited. Because if you're not excited about the goal, then you're missing the point of the whole experience. Um Get also used to writing your goals as if they've already happened. That's a very interesting way of doing it rather than I want blah, 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 blah. You can say I have received blah, 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 blah. And your your mind gets it in a different way and on a deeper level if you've done it in the past tense or at least in the present tense. But the past tense is even more powerful, I think. I have da 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 da. Well, if you if you are telling your mind that you already have created blah 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 blah, then it's going to make sure that blah 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 shows up because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Um, it's good to to watch what you're writing as far as making sure that, especially as you get really powerful with all of this, that. You ask yourself if you're ready, really, really ready to accept the responsibility for what you're writing down in that book. Are you, are you ready to accept the responsibility? Is it something that, that you know is good for you, that you know is good for everyone? Or is it something that you know is not quite ethically sound? And if that's the case, then find another way to get what you want that is ethically sound. There, there's always another way to do it. You don't. You, it's okay to write down specific details. In fact, I encourage that you get very specific with what you want. The size, the color, the sound, all of the things that you want in it. But then also be willing to let it go and allow it to surprise you when it comes back. It's the fun of it. Is if it, it if it's a little different, oftentimes it's better. Almost always it's better than the way you thought it was. So if you if you are open-minded to receiving it in a form that's in a slightly upgraded manner, it's fun because then you're always thinking, I wonder how this is going to show up. I wonder how this is going to look, rather than, where is it? (laughs) Um, As always, it's personal. Don't talk about your goals. Just don't. You're, you're you're, You're going to lose the momentum if you talk about them. Keep it private. It's just for you. Now, if you have a, a, a teacher, magic, a teacher in magic, or somebody that's that's very wise, and, and somebody or a friend who's who 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 understands these things and and can help you, that's fine. They might be able to help you reword things so that you get what you want. That's that's not going to 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 harm your progress. But don't go out shouting out about what it is that you're creating because you probably won't see it if you do that. 
So the the power of the written word is something that people always think is a little too simple, it's a little too silly, it's it's not it's not witchy enough, it's not um it's not complicated enough, so they they discount it, when in fact, sometimes it's what works more quickly and efficiently than any other method. So I would really recommend that you start incorporating writing as part of a magical act into your um, magical practice. Even if you just give it a try for a couple months and see how it works for you. And it works also on the waning moon beautifully. Um, I think I might have discussed this a little bit um, last month. It's just write down what you want to eliminate and then just tear it up and throw it away. You can do it very ritualistically if you want. That's fine. If you're inclined, you can you can burn those things and uh, bur- burn your your piece of paper with sage or or any other herb that you feel is appropriate and uh, and let it go. Or you can just be very nonchalant about it and just say, I'm eliminating this and tear it up and throw it away. Um, and, and don't get too into uh, emotional um, attachment with any of this, whether it's something you're eliminating or something you're drawing to you. There's a magical law of indifference that's very important to understand that you have to really want what you want. That's true. You have to really get in hooked into the current of the desire. But also, you have to be able to detach from the outcome so that it can it 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 can manifest for you. Because if you are too attached to the outcome, it's like the the wrong end of the battery. It pushes it away. So you have to do what seems like an impossible task at first until you get the gist of it as you want it with all of your heart and then you you find a way to be indifferent about how it how it manifests and one of the ways that 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 will work for you is realizing that it's already manifested on the mental plane so you need to just tend to the garden um, just it's the same kind of thing that that a that a farmer or a gardener will do. They really want beautiful roses. They want them, or they want they want beautiful a vegetable garden. And so they plant the beans, let's say, and they and they're very careful, and they make sure that the soil's just right, and that they that they get the the right amount of um, you know sand to to soil ratio and all that stuff, and they get the right nutrients, and they and they get the right kind of beans that that you know they really high quality. And they plant them just the right way, just the, the the spacing, everything. They do everything that they know and they're empowered that that is good, because they really want a good bean crop, and they water it, they they take care of it, but they don't go dig them up. They don't go and ask, "What's wrong with you? Why aren't you growing faster?" They don't do that at all. They know they have. There's no doubt in their mind that they're going to have good beans because they know how agriculture works. Now, once you know how magic works, you'll be able to have the same kind of indifference to the results that a farmer has to to their crops. It's not that they don't desire great crops, of course they do, but they don't let their they don't get attached to the outcome to the to the point where they go dig up the seed to see how it's doing because that'll kill it. That'll just kill it. All right. So give it a try. Give the magic of the written word a try and I'd be very interested in hearing your results well it's a pleasure always to spend time with you and I hope that I will get to see you all on the forum or on Facebook and until then much love and many blessings